Hello everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is another BXJS livestream. So today, as I already mentioned, we're gonna be doing some puppeteer stuff. And uh, there's actually two tickets or two proposals that we're gonna be uh, covering today. First of them is the CSS regression testing. So the proposal was to actually look at the available tools, but we're gonna go a fun way and we're gonna build um, our own thing, right? So I think this is way more interesting than just having a look at browser stack or whatever. Most of the existing solutions already have a pretty decent um, documentation. So you, you know, if you're interested in that, just gonna go and have a look yourself. But we're gonna be doing a more fun version. We're gonna be building um, thesis regression test toolkit, let's call it this way, or um, I guess, Framework, I mean, I wouldn't call it a framework, but basically a tool using uh, Puppeteer. So if you are not familiar, Puppeteer is a Google Chrome library for controlling headless Chrome version. Uh, if you didn't know, you are, um, there is like since version Chrome 58, I believe, uh, there's a way to run Chrome in a headless mode, which means that you can uh, have Chrome running in the background with full page rendering and everything running as, as is it typically runs, but without actually rendering anything for user, right? So this is really works well for automation as well as testing and as well as some other Chrome specific things that I will try to do today. So the other proposal is the automation with Puppeteer and Chrome Headless. Um, this is exactly like the global thing that we're gonna do. As one of the tasks, we're gonna go for the CSS regression stuff. And as some other things we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna extract the coverage of the, or uh, the percentage of the used CSS in JavaScript in the um, your project. And we're probably gonna try to run, I'm not sure if that's implemented yet or not. So the Chrome, since uh, I, I'm not even sure which version it, but they basically added Lighthouse support. So this is the um, progressive web apps analytics thing that is now integrated into Chrome. And uh, we're gonna try and use it headlessly as well and get the results for it. So let us um, start, I guess. So let me make dear, um, let's call it puppeteer. Um, how do we call it? Node puppeteer? No, node puppeteer sounds stupid. Let's call it puppeteer example. You know what? I'm gonna be boring. I'm getting it. npm init minus y. Because I'm lazy. And I'm gonna fire up the code over here on this second screen. Let me come on, let me make it bigger. And um we are going to start with um simple yarn add puppeteer, right? So uh, the cool thing about puppeteer is that uh, since one of the latest versions, I think they've, they've actually done it before 1.0, but it is now 1.0 or even later. Yeah, it is 1.0 still. So the puppeteer, installing puppeteer actually installs the Google Chrome for you. So you don't have to care about the Chrome versions and you know compatibility and all that stuff. Uh, you still can use your locally installed Chrome if you point the Puppeteer to it, but um, yeah. So I'm gonna copy the example script just to show you how exactly it works. We're gonna call it index.js because why the hell not? And um, if I'm gonna run index.js right now, it's gonna take a couple of seconds obviously, but we're actually gonna get an example PNG which will, well, render the screenshot. So what this does is opens a browser, opens a new page, goes to example.com and screenshots it, right? And screenshots to the file. I'm gonna kill that file because we don't really need it. And this is like the very basic example of what Puppeteer is capable of, right? So we're gonna build uh, starting from that. And uh, actually this is the good base for CSS regression testing, right? So uh, let us let us create our website. Um, why not? Let's just call it website. Why the hell not? I'm gonna go into website. I'm gonna npm init minus y. And once again, because I'm lazy, I'm gonna say yarn at next uh, react and react dom. So we're gonna go for uh, next JS once again, because it's just easy to tweak. We're gonna render some page with it and um, basically try to write a test that will tell us that, you know, if our website renders actually as expected or not. Right, so we got that, we got, uh, what we can do is we can git ignore node modules, right? Because we don't need them. Thank you very much. 
Okay, and then we need um, we need Next.js documentation because hell if I remember all the things that I have to do, I think we need pages and index.js here, right? And in index.js, we need to put something. So um, yeah, okay, let's start with a basic example. Oh, whoops, that is not where I wanna put that. Start with a basic example and uh, we also need scripts so we're gonna have dev it's gonna be next and you know what i'm gonna stop here because i don't care about um yeah okay da, 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 website yarn dev i don't really care about the um what do you call it the deployment version in this case right we're only gonna do the testing work okay so we need some css to test it so we need some maybe some elements to test that it actually works um so you know what i'm gonna go for the head and we're gonna use the um bulma again my favorite css framework and uh, we're probably gonna have a slightly okay i probably need to import react just in case so that my linter should stop complaining i i don't know i probably should just disable that rule because it's slightly annoying Okay, so we got the page now. Um, let's hit in the Bulma so that we actually have some CSS to test, right? Um, okay, overview, getting started. Yes, let give me this and, and let's paste this. So we paste the font awesome. Uh, no, that's not what I want. We paste uh, Bulma min CSS, um, copy link tag. Thank you very much. David, there you go. Okay, so now we should have a Bulma integrated. Good, and and we get something. There you go. So we got this. Uh, yeah, class name. Okay, of course. One of them. One of the things that are slightly annoying about React is yeah. Okay, there you go. Okay, so we have the very basic thing. Now, uh, what I would want to do is I want to test the CSS, but let's also test the functionality, right? So let's make it. A class um, home page. Let's call it home page. Extends React component, right? And this is gonna be a re no render. And we're gonna look. Come on, return this stuff. And I'm gonna close it. Close it and format. And now it's gonna complain that we don't have any. Um, basically, it doesn't need the full component. So we're gonna fix that. So I'm gonna call super props. And I'm gonna say this state, let's call it answer. So we're gonna ask user some question and then display his, an or yeah, why not? Let's do it this way. Okay, so we got this. And then uh, here in this container, let's put uh, variables form. Let, let's add a form, right? Let's ask user something. This stuff, um, class name name and it doesn't like it because the input is not closed there you go class name here name here label why you don't like label because it's not label for okay you know what i don't care about that right now there we go we have a uh, input and um, we need a couple of functions so let's say um on um answer change right did i i misspell that answer change there you go and and this set state so we're going to change the answer to event target uh value right and here we're gonna say what's the word whatever because you know we don't <laughs> i don't really care what i going to say so value is going to be this state uh, answer, right? And on change, we're going to say event is this on answer change events. There you go. Reformat the code. Um, that seems to be looking good. And if we type the answer it types, and now what we need to do is we need to render that. I already need that label here, right? So we can just do it like this. And maybe we can even kill that filled wrapper because it's already not, not really useful here. There you go. And uh, let's do another div here. Say you have enter, bleh, entered, entered, uh, whoops, this state, come on, answer, right? So theoretically, um, that probably should be with the condition. So let's do it and length more than zero. And then we can do this, right? There you go. Okay, test. 
Okay, so now we actually see the um, something happening. So it's a dynamic page. It's basically not um, not static. Uh, hi, Lemiro, how's it going? <laughs> well, yes, you can pass greetings to your mom, of course, but I'm not sure if your mom would be interested in watching me program. But uh, yeah, all right, we got the basic page running, right? So I'm gonna keep the server running in the background and now we're gonna go back to the Puppeteer page. Um, obviously, so uh, let's start by the first thing, right? So first of all, there's a bunch of launch arguments that you can give that can give some interesting things. So for example, there is a headless arg where I can say false. And uh, so let me do, we go to localhost 3000 and now I'm actually gonna command this. So if I run this now, whoa, that is super tiny. Let me increase that. If I run the script now, what's actually gonna happen is that it's gonna throw an error because I'm in the wrong folder. But if I'm run it now, you'll actually see how the Chrome, well, come on, where is it? Uh, how the Chrome gets opened and the Chrome actually navigates to the website. And um, basically this allows you to kind of debug what you do. So what we can do is now uh, we can try to enter some value. Kill that, we don't really care about this anymore. And um, let me think. So first of all, the Puppeteer has a really good uh, documentation for API and tons of examples. Um, I don't think we need examples right now, but we just want uh, wait for... So basically, when you load the page, you actually want the page to render completely, right? And uh, sometimes when you don't have like server-side rendering or whatever, you don't really know um, if the page rendered or not, if, if you like, if there is an element on the page. So there is this wait for uh, function. So you can actually say that, you know, I want to wait for, I believe it takes in a selector. So this is what we're going to go for, selector or function. So we're going to wait for our um, inputs, which is just, it's, it's only one input there. So we're just going to wait for input, right? I believe in this case is actually going to be rendered immediately because um, Next.js and server-side rendering, but let's wait for it anyway. And uh, next thing we're going to go, so this is basically wait for page to render completely, right? And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to focus uh, the inputs. Um, I believe that was focus. Yes. Yeah, so since we only have one input, obviously, you know, if you have more, you would actually have to use either the X path or IDs of inputs, which is better or like classes or something like this, and then simulate user inputs. And then we're going to wait page, uh, keyboard press. And uh, that is gonna be keyboard. No, wait. Um, da, 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 um, how does it work? Um, hell, if I remember. WordPress. Um, on. No, oh, come on. Keyboard. Where was it? Type. Ah, type. Right. That was type. So we're gonna type hello world. And if I run that. Um, we actually should probably provide some additional parameters here. So this is the cool thing. You can actually provide a delay that would simulate uh, slow typing, for example, as if a user types it. And if we click on that, you will actually see that, okay, page loads. And here's the puppeteer and Chrome headless actually typing the stuff and we see how it changes, right? So we typed all of that stuff and um, now we actually need to capture the screenshot, right? So capture the screenshot. So what we need to do is to capture it as a new layout PNG, right? And um, first of all, let me just disable headless mode because we're not interested in that. Like I showed it to you that, you know, it's there, it works. We don't really care about it anymore. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a picture and then if there is an old picture, we're going to do a pixel by pixel comparison because we are interested in CSS regressions, which means they are, the layout has to be pixel perfect, right? Um, we might also want to do this. Um, hell, if I remember, how do you set the, uh, wait a second, where we, there is a viewport, 
Okay, viewport, is it through the emulate? Ah, set viewport, there you go, okay. So set viewports, there was an example somewhere. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, so we, we're gonna set the viewport for the page to something like 1920 by 1080, but essentially, you know, you can uh, put anything here, right? So if you wanna test on multiple viewports, multiple sizes, monitors, and so on and so forth, test the uh, responsive layouts, for example, you can do that with uh, Puppeteer only, right? Okay, so we're gonna do that, so let's run it. Theoretically, we should get the new layout PNG afterwards. Ah, uh, right, it won't close actually, but uh, did we get the image? No, we didn't. So first of all, let's close the browser. Second of all, we can kill the delay because it's not helpful in this case. Come on, die. Uh, delays might be helpful if you are trying to automate uh, some something, uh, especially when you work with the third party websites that have like silly bot protection websites, but don't have APIs. Puppeteer can be very helpful in these cases because you can actually pretend to be completely human with it. Okay, so we got this screenshot, right? So now we need to take, um, to compare it actually. So now is the question, is there um, an already an NPM package that can do that? My guess is there is, so let's see. Um, image comparison. Probably like pix pixel match, they, pff, there you go. <laughs> NPM has libraries for everything. You don't even have to think about it. All right, let's go for that. Let's see. So what does it do? Smallest, simplest, fastest pixel level comparison library. That works for us? Okay, so I guess yarn odds pixel match, right? And actually gives a diff. So the question is, can we get a result as a percentage? uh blah 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 parsed reading so this is a streams pixel match so what does it return actually here num ah okay so it actually returns a number of different pixels okay and there's a size so we have to move the const uh config let's call it config viewport uh, it's gonna be i'm gonna just move that out so that we can actually use it in uh Pixel perfect comparison as well, config viewport. It's gonna be this, right? Like this. Uh, no, and there you go. If someone, okay, uh, that seems, no, it doesn't because it's screwed up. There you go, okay. Right, um, talk, let's talk about automatic semicolon insertion and not using semicolons, yeah. Okay, uh, so we did that, we did that. Now we need um, our library, which is a pixel match. So we're gonna call it pixel match, require, right? require pixel match, right? And uh, how do we, so image one, image two, what is that? That is, here's the example with the FES. So create read stream pipe, new PNG on parse done reading. What is this done reading? What is it? Oh, okay. So done reading image one data. Okay. So that is, I guess this is the way that we will have to work with it, right? So we need this PNGGS thing. Um, yes, we're gonna need those two. So I'm gonna go for FS over here. We're gonna go for PNG over here. Yes, we can uh, just destruct that actually. That's always looks nicer. Okay, um, so we save the image. We, yes, we next need to do that. And uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I am gonna do this. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna create a new async function. Read image from file. Um, I guess just image from file would be sufficient here. So file name. And in this case, I'm gonna return new promise, right? Resolve. And uh, it's actually gonna be resolve over here. Um, is that correct? So image one data. Okay, so we need to say that this is const image. And uh, actually once it's done, it should resolve into image data. That's what we want, right? So we got the file name, we read the file, uh, that should be file name here. Reads the file, it pipes it into the PNG 
when it's parsed, it resolves with image data and we get the data exactly from it. Right, so next thing is if um, FS, um, ta -da -da, wait a second, nodes FS. So basically what we need to do is we need to check if there's already a file that is uh, the old layout, right? So that we have something to compare to. Um, FS, is it access, I think, right? Um, blah, blah, blah. Does it, is, wasn't there like exists or something like this? Wait a second, copy exists, deprecated in favor of stat, right? Okay, it was stat. So, um, come on, try a fast stat. Um, no, this is the callback one, so why not? Let's go, um, we can do promiseify require util, right? And in this case, we're going to be as stat. It's going to be promissify as stat. What we need, uh, that is a typo. I'll do that. I say await const old file, await fs stat old uh, layout. So it's probably a good idea to move that to config as well. If old file um so catch error return undefined uh yeah i guess this is actually what we need so we don't care about the errors if old file uh, actually i would actually do this right so if we don't have a file we just close here let's say console log no old file exiting uh, no old layout call it correctly Right, if there is an old layout, const uh, new layout is gonna be image from file, new layout, PNG, and then old layout is gonna be exactly the same, but old layouts, there we go. And now we need to actually compare them, right? So if, um, oh, Okay, diff pack pipe. Oh, okay, they 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 save the diff to the. We don't actually need to do that. So here's the question: image diff. I guess you do need to provide that anyway, right? So okay, let's let's do that. So yes, um, const diff pixels. I really hope const diff. Okay, this is gonna be config viewport. Gonna be new layout. This is gonna be old layout. Gonna be diff data, why not? This is gonna be config viewport with config viewport height, threshold one, and console log diff is diff pixels, right? Okay, and once we're done diffing, uh, if diff pixels, I guess, okay, for now, let's just leave it at this. And then we need to say that we need to actually node FS, um, what was the copy method? We need to copy the new one into the old one, right? No, we actually don't need to do that. We only need to do that if we don't have the old one. So FS copy, copy file, there you go. I guess I could have just used the sync versions instead of promisifying everything, but eh, what the hell. Okay, await, uh, let us const fs copy, promisify fs copy file, fs copy file, right? So we're gonna await copy file and the signature for it is source destination. Okay, so source is gonna be new layout png. Destination is old layout PNG. And uh, right, so we need to close the browser here as well. Let's test it out. I might have screwed something up. No old layout existing exiting, so it copied it. So now if we run it again, should get zero difference. Perfect. So uh, let's say if diff pixels zero, console log says, no 
a difference in rendering. This way, otherwise, Ooh, oh. um, there are, this probably should be a string literal. Um, well, there are the pixels, different, different pixels in new layout, new render. Okay, so, cool. So now we get the success and now if we go to the pages and uh, let's, let's do something subtle. So we have this blue border around the input, right? So let's do um, style JSX style. So we say that uh, input, how do, you, how do you define the border? Hell if I remember that. Let's see, so we got, come on, come here border color so we need the focus state right focus yes and we need uh input focus border color okay whoops input focus border color and uh let's um no that's not what i want because give me back my element let's change it to like green for example right so like this maybe this save okay reload and now it's green right so theoretically if we now run the same thing we should get that wow what wait a second how is that huh now that's curious why well, wait a sec did i screwed up somewhere um okay it takes new it takes old i screwed up the image loading so let's let's have a look i mean it shouldn't match right so <laughs> that should be breaking uh pipe new png yes on parse done reading done reading okay so when it's done reading yeah it, it uses image one data image two data and then div data okay run with image one hey threshold zero point oh maybe the threshold is too high so what is the threshold during explanation from zero to one uh okay so i guess if we put it to zero so basically we want it to be exactly pixel perfect then it will give us an error right what no eh modern render makes the comparison more sensitive that doesn't seem to be true they're detecting and ignoring anti-aliased pixels um mentions must be equal Okay, here's the question. Console log, new layout. Uh, no, wait. New layout. Yep, no. On. This is what I want. Yes, thank you very much. So, in theory. Oh, yep. I'm an idiot. Yep. <laughs> this is one of the problems with the sync await. If you forget to do that. And there we go. Okay, now it breaks. Okay, cool. So 2070, uh, 2,744 different pixels. Okay, cool. So in theory, if I now kill that, right, and restart it, we should have zero different pixels. Perfect. Okay, so we actually made it. Um, I'm gonna just do this and leave it here as an example, right? So um, let me put it this way. Uh, yeah, okay, that's not gonna be so on command me to break a test. Right, so this is the very basic test, right? And we made it working. So let us commit that. Um, yeah, okay, uh, git reset. We don't need dot next thing git ignore dot next. Um, okay, git state. No, what? Git state. I reset website.next, right? What the? Yeah, okay, there you go. And get status, there we go. Uh, we also don't need uh, images, right? So this is something that you should generate on your own. I mean, I guess you could... Again, what? No, I 
just need to ignore new layout and old layout. Hit reset, new layout and old layout. Okay, let's see. That looks that looks good. Okay, cool. Um, git status, git commit basic version with uh, pixel perfect um, rendering comparison. So now that it's it took us half an hour to do that, that's you know very very simple, I would say. Now let's do something a bit more fun. So um, we have here a thing, right? That renders CSS and JS, but the reality is it actually doesn't use everything, right? So there is um, the Chrome has a, th a special DevTools thing that allows you to actually profile it and figure out what kind of um, how much how much CSS and how much uh, JavaScript of the one that you included you actually use. Well, if I remember, where is it? Was it in the sources, I think? No, okay, wait a second. Let me try to find it. Chrome uh, DevTools, it says JS usage coverage. I know that you can now invoke that from Puppeteer, but hell, if I remember how to call it manually from the DevTools. Sources and uh, coverage tab. Okay, so there's a coverage tab now over here and uh, why don't I have it? Do I need to enable that? Uh, preserve filter messages. That is not what I want. Air cover. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So we got this coverage drawer. And we reload. And we stop, right? And as you can see here, we can actually see that we have a lot of unused JavaScript and even more unused CSS because we literally use like two and a half styles, right? So it would be cool to automate that and get that report with every build, for example, right? So if you're if you're doing the uh, client faced app, it's always nice to, you know, try to trim it as much as possible. So um, let me move the index.js into um, render comparison, let's call it this way JS. And uh, let's touch uh, sick or codes usage, let's call it code usage, yes, right? So it's going to be a different file, I am going to copy most of that. I mean, we don't really need the um, pixel perfect stuff and file system and all that. So we actually need that. We don't need all of this. And now we need to find so we wait for that. And da -da -da. Um, I believe puppeteer has a way to actually invoke that. So let's see. Uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Puppeteer API um, coverage. Do we have coverage? Yes, we do have coverage and returns coverage. That is not very helpful. So let's see Puppeteer coverage. Is it possible to capture code coverage data? Yes, this is what I want. Uh, blah, 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 blah. That was in October. And there is now page coverage. And okay, there's a separate uh, API thing for that. I got that. Okay, that seems to be pretty straightforward. So we enable coverage, right? And we go to page, we wait for it to load, and then we disable coverage. And then we calculate, uh, in this case, they do the byte calculation, but we can have a look at actually what we got there. Okay, yeah, yes, Lint can sort off with that stuff. Okay, so if I run that, theoretically, we should get some Bytes used 60%. Okay, so it does the, it gives you the percentage. Um, math floor, let's do it like this. Um, ta -da -da. It's nicer, there you go. Okay, so bytes used 60%. Why is it says bytes used if it's like used percentage? That's the total percentage. So I guess we could. Um, it would be better to split them and actually output the uh, them separately, right? So first of all, let's see console log yes coverage. Let us have a look what kind of format do they use there? Okay, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see one entry. Okay, so entry is URL ranges and text. Um, okay, start ends. End minus start minus one. 
Okay, so I guess this is the used by so this is the ranges of used stuff, right? And bytes basically. Okay. Um I guess you cannot really get this nice rendering that you get in the uh, dev tools, at least easily, but uh, that's fine. So basically what we want is to say const JS usage, JS coverage, reduce, and we're gonna reduce it and it's gonna be accumulator value, right? Which means that we need to say accumulator is gonna be plus equals value end minus value start minus one, return accumulator. And we are gonna need to do exactly same for uh, CSS, right? That's actually it. So, um, ta -da 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 -dum. so used JS bytes, and that is da -da 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 -dum. Um, total bytes. Okay, we need total bytes as well. And what did they do for total bytes? Did it just add everything, right? Text length. Okay, so it's just the length of text. JS total bytes let us do this JS coverage reduce accumulator value and it's gonna oh right I forgot to say that we start with zeros right um, so we do what we return accumulator plus uh, value text length start at zero um that's val yep oh okay I guess we can also return just do this right because we don't really need that additional stuff around it that's all we need actually emulator plus uh yep that looks nicer and yes total bytes so we need the same for css css total bytes uh css coverage da, 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 da. so used js bytes i'm gonna say so we can kill this I need coverage anymore. We can say JS usage and JS total bytes. Yes, it will be better to call it JS use used bytes, right? And the same with CSS. So CSS used bytes. Yeah, used CSS bytes. CSS used bytes and CSS total bytes. And now in theory. Um, I screwed something up. <laughs> okay. Um, so it returns the accumulator, which is zero, then value text length. Value and value, did I? It's range, oh, because it, it, ah, right. Because we have to iterate through ranges. Okay. Used by, so okay, it has ranges. So we need to actually, the reducement will be a bit trickier here. Value ranges uh, is gonna be reduce. Accumulator value, uh, error value, let's call it this way. It's gonna be accumulator plus error value and minus error value start minus one, starting with zero. Um, starting with zero, whoops, that is too many. Okay, that looks better, I think. Um, that is, yeah, error accumulator, let's do it this way, okay. So yeah, basically the problem was that it was in a nested value, not directly, and you have to reduce the ranges as well. Um, that is too many things. There you go. Okay, so we take the ranges, we reduce them. Right, okay, that seems correct-ish. There you go, okay. So now you can see that we have wasted a ton of CSS and um, half of JS is unused as well. I mean, that is obviously because of the... Um, did I replace the old picture? I don't think I did. I mean, right now they're both the same, right? But um, wait a second. Boom. So it only, it does replace the old picture on, uh, no, wait a second. No, it doesn't. So it only replaces, it only creates the old picture if there is no old picture, right? So it should not replace it under any circumstances. So you are lying to me, chat. Okay, um, so we got the unused bytes thing. Um, now here's the other thing. So there's this audits tab now that has the, um, well, audits, including the Lighthouse one, 
that allow you to do stuff like, you know, see the things that are important for progressive app apps, see performances, best practices, and ac accessibility best practices. Running them on Chrome is very easy, uh, but you know, you like running it manually every time is not very nice. So we're gonna see if it's possible to actually run that and get the results using Puppeteer as well, because why the hell not? You know, we're automating everything, right? Uh, it does take quite some time. So we're gonna see um, if, if uh, wait a second, Puppeteer audits. It might be that they are uh, they haven't yet implemented that. Uh, quick start running audit with, oh, they even have a wiki page for that. No, wait, that's, uh, okay. So there is a special AXS testing script. What the hell is that? Um, include the general accessibility de dev tools access testing library in your puppet test. Create new run method that will blah, blah, blah. Okay, that seems slightly trickier than I hoped it would be. So it seems like it's not yet integrated into the puppeteer itself. Okay, and you do get like a bunch of, as you can see, you know, the like, it, it gives you quite a lot of actually very useful information. Like, you know, you, you need to get a service worker, do not respond to 100 when offline. HTTPS, 3G speed is terrible because we're in death mode, obviously, and so on and so forth. So it is a very useful thing. Plus you get like all this, you know, like time to render, time to first interaction and so on and so forth. Uh, first meaningful fame, uh, first meaningful paint. And it is a very useful tab, by the way. So if you have, if you didn't know about it, do have a look at it. There's a lot of very cool things you can do with it. Um, but let us try to figure out if we can actually run it uh, with Puppeteer. So this is one, this is two audit rules. Um, okay, let's see, audit, no lighthouse, so no, how do you do that, audit rules, aria x, aria one, okay, what is, this is also not what we want, example audits, our example, um, that is not what I want, wait for example, here's a question, do they have an example for that, because that would be awesome, so I haven't looked at the example stats closely, a screenshot, screenshot, full page, search, proxy, PDF, detect, sniff. What is detect, sniff? Um, user agent. No, this is not what we want. So, okay, let's see. What is this accessibility developer tools thing? Library of accessibility related testing and utility code. So I assume that AX, a AXS testing thing is, is from here, right? Yeah, it is, okay. So, right, so we got that thing. I guess this this one actually run the Lighthouse audit, right? This probably run this AXS audit, which is a bit annoying. Hmm. Okay, let me see. Maybe we can find a way to run it, like the proper Lighthouse, like the full audit. Puppeteer. DevTools audit. House, slide. House, audit. Puppeteer, there's a Puppeteer Lighthouse package. Wonder what that does. Uh, let's have a look at the Google, uh, GitHub. Run Lighthouse through Puppeteer. Okay, that seems exactly what we wanna do. Right, so I guess he figured it out. So it means, it means that it must be possible. Light oh, okay, so it's a separate package. Uh huh. Uh, test puppeteer launch, puppeteer launch new page, lighthouse URL settings audit, then write test results. T pass. Why? Why do you need a? Wait a second. So, uh, why do you need? Question here is why do you need puppeteer for that? Because <laughs> looks like this lighthouse package does everything. Um, npm package lighthouse. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so it's also a Chrome Chrome package from the Chrome guys. That is nice. Using lighthouse in Chrome DevTools. Uh, yeah, I know that you can do that. Uh, lighthouse. Yeah, you can do it from command line. Is there? Is there using lighthouse programmatically? There you go. Okay, Chrome launch, launch, 
Okay, so you do need some browser basically which runs the so it's it's some sort of a wrapper. Okay, yeah, we can we can do that. Um, let me commit the code, I guess. We don't really need any more dependencies, right? So I can just do code and render rem index. Uh, whoops, git status, git commits, add basic codes usage calculation using puppeteer every time i try to spell puppeteer i spell it wrongly unless i have something to look at <laughs> this name is just terrible to remember i mean the name is nice but remembering it is abysmally hard for me okay um lighthouse lighthouse js right so we need puppeteer we need lighthouse require lighthouse right and now we i guess we can just use that package because that looks nice so we got this like url audit what is this audit thing yeah let's see this example what do they have so they launched the chrome with whatever flex lighthouse url options config where do this url options config url options so config can be null that's fine which means, and this returns the results, right? So this is exactly what we want to do. And I guess we don't really need URL here. So we only open the browser. Const results, await lighthouse, GDP localhost 3000. Um, what is opts here? Chrome flags. So we don't care about Chrome flags, which means we can skip all, I guess, like this. So we just need to pass in the console log. Really? That's that simple? <laughs> that would be awesome. I mean, I like when the uh, when you can just do that, basically. Lighthouse.js. Let's see. Um, unhandled error. Connection refused. Okay, so I guess I did something wrong. Um, settings. What are the settings here? So this... Uh, Couple more files. I guess it's not as trivial running it with Puppeteer, maybe. Ready config, uh, audit. What is that? Um, I should. I opened the wrong file, haven't I? Settings. All right. Uh, remotes. So headless false. And why do you want a headless false? Okay. So we need to pass in the args. Uh, was too many arcs so we need to pass in the remote debug import right because the looks like lighthouse connects via the remote debugger see that i will take some time i mean i, I guess i should have actually executed without the headless mode so that we could actually see what the hell is going on but i took a couple of minutes to or i guess under about a minute to run right so let's wait a bit uh, meanwhile, if you have any questions, I am looking into chat from time to time. Okay, we actually got the whole thing and oh my god, that is a lot of stuff. Um, what we want to do is we actually want to write that to file, right? So we're going to, yeah, we're going to do that. Um, ta -da -da const fs require fs and uh, just going to say... Um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to be again doing the same thing. I'm going to say that I want promiseify. I'm going to promiseify that thing. Um, um, fs write file. There is, by the way, uh, Node.js 10 will include the promiseified API uh, or the API with support for promises for the FS module, I think. I don't know about the others, but I've read about the FS module, which is great because you can finally just wait all that stuff. Okay, um, results JSON. Gonna be JSON stringify uh, results. It's formatted nicely. And that's basically it, right? Let's try to run it again. So, right now, after that, we should get a nice report in JSON. And uh, basically, after that, we could just render it in browser or render it nicely in console or whatever. Basically, the question is format. So it took 20 seconds, I guess. I think this is the timing for it, or maybe not. Okay, we're done, and this is our results, Jason.
LiDAR's version 2.8. Here's our audits on HTTPS or true. How is that? It's not uses HTTPS. It doesn't use HTTPS. Why do you take what? What? Raw value true. I okay. Redirects HTTPS false. How how is that true? Why is it is that's a bit weird. Okay. Works offline false, viewport false. Okay, yeah. So basically it's it's easy to extract all those um all the same data that we saw in the console from here. And it looks like it even has images in line, so you can just construct a blob URL, I guess, from that. Which is pretty neat. So you can you can even convert that to um nice list even in console, which is which is absolutely fine. All right. We are not gonna do that because there is a ton of values here that will take ages to actually render that nicely in console so i'm gonna ignore that we're just gonna write it to file um i mean i guess mostly there's probably some resulting value right like you pass everything or you fail everything i mean this is report groups um total no no that's not what we want run warnings URL okay let's collapse audits artifacts okay this like scripts CSS oh it even gives you CSS usage as well that's pretty nice so you can actually only run this audit and extract the CSS and JavaScript usage from it which is pretty cool and can save you a lot of time because this is essentially this does a lot of things once ah there you go there's a score so I guess we can show that right so let's do this console log Audit finished score uh, is whoops results score and by literal okay um theoretically if we rerun it again 20 seconds not that much we should actually see this score here and uh I don't know what else can we do with puppeteer like let me think what other fun things do we have here? Like emulation of events, frames, keyboard, mouse, PDF. Um, we can try to like print to PDF maybe. Why the hell not? But it's it's like it's so easy. I don't even know if it's worth it because it's literally like one command. You just say, hey, here's a PDF thing. Like print this page to PDF and save it to this file. You know. I <laughs> I don't know if it's worth doing. Because like this lighthouse and uh, render comparison and code usage are a bit trickier because you actually get like proper reports here. There we go. That looks okay. Um, let's see. Viewport. Wait for keyboard. We did that. Mouse. That's yeah. Okay. I mean, same as keyboard. Nothing complicated about that. That's the dialogues frames. Okay. I think yeah, that might be a good place to wrap it up actually. So we're gonna ignore our results. Git adds, git commits, add lighthouse report, report this way. Right. So, okay. We're actually done here. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to post them in chat. I think I will try a slightly different thing today. So basically, instead of recording a recap video afterwards, as I do it um, always, I'll try to just do a recap here and then uh, on a stream like live right now, and then just cut it out and post it as a separate video for people who just want to watch like, you know, really short thing. Uh, and uh, this recaps might be useful for you as well. If you are, if there are some parts that you missed in the beginning of stream or some parts you did not get from the first time maybe i can try to explain a second time so um you know what i need one more thing i need a readme md first and i'm gonna be a lazy again and i'm gonna just copy it from uh, one of the projects i guess um like friday would be nice why not uh let's see readme md Pro. uh using puppeteer or perfect no, okay you know what for fun and profit screw that i'm gonna do better description on using a tier 
for fun and profit. And I'm going to have a better description over here for using puppet here for fun profit video. Post the video later on. Is a series of small demos showing how to use Puppeteer to do CSS regression testing via pic ah, pixel perfect perfect image comparison, right? Uh, that do okay. Let's do it this way. Um, what else? Get percentage of or uh, CSS and JS usage for your website. Come on, why can't I spell today? Um, perform lighthouse audit of your sounds about right. So it's going to be puppeteer here. Kill that and uh, I think we only need a lighthouse reference here, right? Lighthouse. Right, puppeteer lighthouse. Um, yes, it was like slash lighthouse, right? Lighthouse, yeah, there you go. Okay, I'm just gonna copy that and uh, get status, get add me, uh, no. Add simple readme. Okay, good with that. So I should probably push it to the GitHub now. There's like no questions so far. So, you know, if you have any uh, come up in your head while you're watching this, feel free to ask them. Right, puppeteer examples. Let's call it examples because there's more than one right now. Um, Puppeteer for fun and profits, create the repo and just push that stuff over there and then do a recap. Come on. Okay. Very good. Right. So let's do a recap then. Um, no, wait. Let's do this first. There you go. Otherwise, I will forget about that. <laughs> Okay, so today we did three things using Puppeteer. Um, now, that's, that's a terrible way to start recap, right? I should probably start by saying what the hell is Puppeteer. I already did that at the beginning. of. Okay, let's see. I'll just do a recap of what the hell did we code and then that should be enough. So we did three things using Puppeteer. First of all, we did the CSS regression testing using pixel perfect image comparison. Uh, you can find it in render comparison.js file. Um, we used the puppeteer to actually capture the screenshot from the browser. We used pixel match to do the pixel, pixel by pixel comparison. And we used the PNG GS to actually transform um, the images into required format for pixel match. The way it works is actually pretty simple. So we open the browser, we set the viewport to whatever we configure. In this case, I took the 1080p resolution, which is kind of the standard. We go into localhost 3000, which is our local website that we have under the website here. Uh, and we wait for the page to render the input that we uh, created there, right? So we focus that input and type in hello world to make sure that it actually outputs uh, what is expected. And we can actually visually check that. If we go to old layout, you will see that there is a hello uh, world printed here and you, you can see the result that we have entered hello world, which is the denied, den which is the dynamic part of the page. So uh, after that, we take a screenshot called new layout, and then we check if the old layout is present. So if there's no old layout, we just say, hey, no old layout here. We copy the new layout to old layout and exit because there's nothing to compare against, right? If there is an old layout, we load both files, new layout and old layout as uh, special data required for pixel matching, and we create a resulting PNG diff. Once we did that, we do the pixel match function on all that stuff with the parameters and we set the threshold here to zero because we want pixel perfect comparison, right? And then we just see the difference uh, in pixels. So if there's no difference, then well, no difference in rendering, we successfully passed the comparison. 
And if there are any different pixels, we can actually see that, okay, there is some different pixels and it's broken, right? So um, you can run it by running node render comparison here. And uh, what is going on? No difference. Why, why is the connection reset? What is, what? Is there something hanging in the background that I forgot to kill? Because of all this running stuff, it might be that something just hangs in there. Come on. So this seems to be running. Okay, now it's fine. I guess it was like half dead Chrome in the background or something. So there's this is our website. And uh, to test that it actually breaks and that the rendering works correctly, you can just uncomment this thing here and it will actually break the rendering test, right? If you run this again, we'll actually see that um, the image is no longer matched and you will get a warning saying, hey, there's a 2,744 pixels difference. And if you check the old layout and new layout, you see that the new layout contains the green border while the old layout contains the blue one. And this is why it breaks. And then back. So the second thing we did was the code usage. Um, Chrome allows you to go through the, create the G JavaScript and CSS code coverage and check how much of your code is actually used. So we run the Puppeteer. We started the code coverage um, before getting the page. Then we went to the page, waited for input again, waited for page to render completely. We got the coverage data and then reduced the data into the two values. So first of all, we reduce into total bytes that are there. And then we reduce the uh, ranges that are provided into actually used bytes. So the ones that are actually used by the page and output that into the console. Um, if you run the node code usage JS, you will actually see that in this case, we used about 1% of CSS. This is because we import the whole Bulma framework, but actually have like two headers and an input, which obviously accounts for about 1% of CSS. And then we have a 64% of JavaScript used. Um, this is because we're running Next.js in a dev mode, which means that there's a whole bunch of like hot reload and other stuff that is never invoked actually in the, just rendering the page, right? And uh, finally, we used the Lighthouse, uh, we performed the Lighthouse audit uh, for the website and generated the report and displayed the score in the uh, results. So the way it works is pretty simple. You would need the Puppeteer library that would start the Chrome for you and you would need the Lighthouse library that would actually do the audit itself. So it's a separate library, even though the uh, Chrome itself, if you go into inspect tab and go into audits, you will find the audit over here. For some reason, Puppeteer doesn't yet have access to that. I mean, maybe it's there yet, but the API are not written. Uh, but anyway, it's quite easy to set up with a separate library here. So all you need to do is pass additional argument for Chrome saying that you want to remote debug import, which is 9222 in this case, is default one. And then once the browser starts, you just call the Lighthouse uh, library on the website that you want to audit. And in this case, I just write the results to the results JSON file and uh, output the score. You can run that by running nodes um, lighthouse.js. It takes about 20, 25 seconds on my machine to run. Um, there is a lot of things that the Lighthouse actually checks. And uh, in a second while, once it finishes, I will show you the example of the report. Um, so um, yeah, this could be useful um, to, to run basically once you say after the staging project, right? So because you don't really want to run it on every rebuild because it takes a lot of time. So as you've seen here, you get the audit finished, you get the final score. And here's the whole report. And you know, it's really, really big with a lot of information that can help you make your app better, starting from the um, accessibility info, offline, uh, progressive web apps friendly and whatever, there's like a ton of things in here, including best practices, first meaningful paint time and so on and so forth. So there's like a lot of information, including by the way, the code coverage. So if you wanna run only one thing, you can go with this, uh, which yeah, you can basically extract from here. It's just a JSON. It is a big JSON, but yeah, you know, uh, if you run the same info in or the same uh, audit in the Chrome, you will get a nicer UI here. So let me just run it for you over here. It does take a bit longer, I guess, because it has to render all of that on the screen. So it's not 20 seconds, just slightly longer. But uh, once it's done, you will actually, you know, if you want to run it manually, you can do it uh, like this and you will get a nicely looking, very user friendly report, let's put it this way. So in, in this case, you would have to implement the UI yourself, which can be a bit tricky.
or maybe you just want to track specific metrics. So yeah, this is basically it. Um, there's, yeah, really Puppeteer is an amazing tool for automating all of that stuff, uh, including end-to-end -end testing, by the way. So we did not do this within this tutorial, but you can do end-to-end -end testing with uh, Puppeteer very, very easy because it has the API required for manipulating everything. Like in this case, we manipulated only keyboard, right? So we did typing here. But you can uh, just as easily manipulate mouse movements, clicking, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's a very powerful tool. There we go. There's our audit. As you can see here, the PVA score is very low because obviously there's like no web workers, no offline, HTTP, so on and so forth. Performance is also not very good because we're running in a dev mode. So yeah, you know, um, still, that's basically it. Um, do you guys have any questions? I am, I think I have like, 10 more minutes so if you have any questions do shoot them at me let me see i think we're good so we are pushed everything right kill that i probably should mention that um yeah. uh a running project so first start the website from uh website folder by running npm run dev right to execute one one of the scripts in parent folder um film render comparison js or code usage js or Lighthouse JS, right? Okay. Um, da -da -dum, git commit clarify running. Oh, uh, running demo. Oh, this way. Git push. Well, looks like there are no questions. Um, so I would say that we are basically done here. You can, as usual, find the code on GitHub. I am gonna post the upload the live stream and youtube as usual post the links on both issues and um, then cut the recap out and try uh, to see how that goes and you know if, if that's uh, good enough quality basically for you guys do let me know about that so yes um, i guess we can just wrap it up here yeah looks like no questions here so you know thank you for watching uh thank you for staying with me through the whole live stream and I see you next time. Bye.